Hello everybody, today we're going to be going through a pretty quick lesson on setting up red dot sites in Unreal Engine 4 and 5. We're going to make some assumptions along the way, but we're really going to be talking about setting up the material of this actual dot here in the um, red dot. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to assume for your import that you've already imported the static mesh for your red dot body. In this case, I got an EOTech site right here. We're also going to assume that you've imported a reticle, and this is just be a PNG file with white representing the reticle and alpha representing everything else. So just the reticle. I'm going to go ahead and open up the simplified material in this. And what this is going to be applied to is a plain static mesh. But when we make this material, You'll notice down here that the blend mode is set to translucent and we're also setting our shading model to be unlit and we're not casting any shadows. So this is a very simple shader. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up an emission color. So this is a vector three. We can multiply it by a vector one or well, a constant. <laughs> we can multiply it by a constant to get an emissive color and this once you convert them to parameters, um, which will be important for our material instances, this will control the scale that the actual uh, intensity will occur at. So obviously the higher the scale, the more intense and red dotty that's going to be on. So probably something around 20 to 50 is going to be a nice emissive color for our reticle. Our texture sample over here that we've also turned into a parameter. Notice how we will take the alpha channel of this reticle and apply it to the opacity. That's just because when we look at this reticle, um, all the alpha channel is going to do, if I turn off this, all the white is going to be passed through, all the black is going to be ignored. Right, Pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and go back to simple. The next node that we're going to apply is our parallax effect, which would be called the bump offset node. Now this will plug directly into the UVs of your reticle, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be passing it at a constant of um, the height that's going to be displaced by this. So what it does is the shader will mimic a displacement value as though on the top of this shader, so if I go right here onto a cylinder, see how a displacement value of zero Basically, we'll stick it right on the top of the surface. So if we go negative, we will pull the reticle away from us. And so it's now been displaced by 100 units. I think it's centimeters in Unreal Engine, not quite sure. But you can see that even with um, that cylinder, uh, it's been displaced back. Now when we go into our reticle here for our texture sample, it's important during the import process that we set the tiling methods to clamp. If we don't update this and we do the wrap, what's going to happen is this texture is going to reach the edge of its map on the projection and it's going to repeat. So we'll go back over here to simple and we can see that being repeated right now. Now, <laughs> this would be a pretty interesting uh, reticle. You could probably do this for like some sort of holography, but we're only going to need this one time and as such, we're going to go ahead and clamp it. So we'll go ahead and save that and update it. This is the basic, very simple red dot. You'll notice that it's a negative reticle depth. This will make it look like the dot has been set and projected backwards in front of the site. Okay. Now when we set up our blueprint, we have our body, which is a static mesh. And then we have a plane, which is also a static mesh. It's just that we apply the shader that we made to this plane, and that's going to hold our dot. It makes it really easy to flip in and out uh, material instances to apply to the dots, and if we expose these parameters, then we can better control them. Okay, that's why we, we did that. Now, the big thing with um, master materials, which is just a basic material that you haven't made a material instance of, is if we go ahead and open up our simple um, master material again, you'll notice that we have converted a couple of objects in this material to parameters. And you can do that just by right clicking. Um, actually, I'll just make a new one. 
you right click and you hit uh, convert to parameter then you can just name it right that's going to be important because our material instances are going to take all of the parameters that we make from the master material namely our reticle color our reticle texture and the bump offset depth and the emission intensity and you can just do that by right clicking create material instance and you just do mi rds blah 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 right so you'll notice that this underscore is now called material instance and when you open it up it still looks like the material editor but now our parameter groups have been modified from their default values and notice that when we check them, we can start modifying them. So the emission intensity, the default value for this, um, I'm just going to set it to 100. Maybe I want to make it look like it's at night. I want to set it further back. Maybe I want to go 350 units back from the center. That makes it smaller. And then I'll keep the same radical, but you could always change this. And then we'll just change the vector 3 for the uh, color of the radical. Really straightforward. Okay. So we'll go ahead and save this, go back into our collimator, and apply that. And there we go. There's our very bright material instance child. Okay, that does it for a very simple uh, material for a red dot site um, using mass material and all that jazz. I'm going to go ahead and show you an advanced material. In this advanced material, we have a couple of different things going on. What we have is not only just the emission intensity and all this other stuff, we have texture scaling. So if we scale our UVs, we have a scaling parameter using the texture coordinates. Um, this will allow us to scale up our texture from the center as opposed to from the left corner, because that's how UVs will scale. They scale out from the left corner. Whereas by using scale use V's by center node, they'll scale from the center of the texture out. Okay. The next portion is if we bring in what's called a rainbow cloud texture file, you'll notice that every one of these channels has in Photoshop, you know, clouds rendered to it. And the reason why is this is just called texture channel packing. Um, and this allows us to store different uh, details of textures inside of a single texture file that we can reference. Um, so what we got here is, all right, I'll just close that, close that, close that, go back to our advanced. Now what we're doing with these two uh, texture samples is we are taking the texture coordinates and we are looping through them using the time node because um, if we just took the time node and we just plugged it directly into the UVs, it's going to scale um, by referencing the single coordinates. Well, if we just did this to the texture coordinates, you'll see how it just keeps sliding together in the same direction. That's not really what we want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to multiply it by a vector 2, which is going to give us the direction to take this texture. So we're going negative, negative, so that means down and to the right. Whereas our other portion down here is going positive, positive, which is to the left and up. And what we're doing is we're taking the individual layers of these. We're taking the red and green channel, stabbing them together to make a vector 3. Taking the red and blue channel, stabbing them together to make a vector 3. And then we're adding them together to get this little mishmash that looks a lot more organic. Um, and that's just to make it so that it doesn't look very repetitive. Otherwise, um, some people will not like this. Okay. What we're then doing with this added texture is that we are going to clamp its values between a minimum and a maximum um, number, usually 0 to 1. And what this clamp is going to do is if a value is below our low, it's going to raise it up to this value. If it's above our max, it's going to lower it. Well, one's the max, so that's, that's fine here. We're then going to multiply this by an opacity scaler. And what this is going to do is this is going to make the multiplication of these UVs more drastic. So if I go up here and I scale it by... 25, you can see everything is basically yellow now. 
it's a lot more advanced but um, the main thing that we're trying to do here is we're trying to get a flickering effect um, actually I'll probably drop it down to five there we go that's a little bit more pronounced and you can see this flickering effect in this red dot where it looks like um, just like a regular red dot would look like in real life actually I should probably raise this opacity clamp there we go it's a little bit greener and you can see less of it we're then going to be multiplying it by our alpha channel and what this is basically going to do is our alpha channel when it's one it's going to pass through completely perfect right if it's going to hit these little low spots it's going to bring it down to less than one and it's going to make it just a little bit more transparent and it's going to give us that flickering effect so all in all and i have these other uh nodes here to kind of just talk about what happens if you add it versus multiply if we add it then you can see the textures sliding across not what we want to do if we subtract it we're subtracting the alpha layer or sorry we're subtracting the opacity from the alpha layer it's got a little bit more pronounced effect but probably not the best you can kind of see it uh, perform bad at edges and then finally if we do the opposite subtract we now have a difference where we have an entire surface but we cut out a silhouette so it all just depends on what you really want to do with this in this case I like multiply um, because it just makes everything look a lot nicer okay so it's the same thing with this uh, more advanced material right click make a material instance go ahead and name it just call it that open this now because I have more parameters I can set this to be a bit you know more constructive there's a hundred intensity uh, I don't want to mess with the uh, opacity clamping at the moment we're going to take it to 175 depth and then we're going to scale the reticle by cutting it in half making it twice as small it doesn't look like it's twice as small but when you see it on the projection it will be we're also going to change the reticle change it to a delta oh and I got to open this and make sure this is clamped okay that's easy looks like a nice little triangle and then we're just gonna make it like white right why not fuck it okay then we're gonna save this go back into our blueprint and set that up and there you go you have a nice little Delta site extremely blown out but that would be um, how it looks and that is how you make a more advanced and convincing red dot site in unreal engine 4 and 5 thank you guys for watching i hope you did find this valuable um, be sure to drop a like or drop a comment and see if you guys need any help on this stuff have a great day